<laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I can hear me through YouTube. Uh, try saying something. David? I'm not hearing David anymore. Hold on. YouTube is not picking up the volume from StreamYard, and I don't know that's, why. That seems to be a problem. Oh, wait. No, I have it. All right. So if I do this. Okay, try saying something now just to test it. Check one, two, three. Okay. We're getting an incredible latency. Uh, of yeah, we, seconds. I, I'm getting a, a few seconds delay, but uh, yeah, it works now. So, all right. Sorry, everyone. It's fun time. You know, we 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 have to rely on technology, and it sometimes. It's, that's why AI is not a good idea, because then they're just going to shut us off and we're going to live in computer world. All right. Well, uh, sorry about all that, uh, everyone. Mr. K, thank you so much, first, for uh, accept, accept, accepting my request when we met at TFCon. Um, I was wearing a purple shirt back then. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, it was great seeing you. You had a great panel, and I was amazed by the amount of uh people in your line like you know everybody was yeah, for dude, fairly I'm always, I'm always amazed at that i'm amazed there's one person in line <laughs> but i mean <laughs> it's so, what so, I was mostly mostly amazed at was the fact that the uh, yeah i figured sort of um yeah beast wars and and you know uh we're all aging out of it you know it's like 90 not what 94 95 or 90, whatever that is. it was back in the 90s and but yet um, at TFCon uh, and, and other conventions too, I noticed that the audience is uh, getting younger and younger again because of streaming and and uh, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm getting young kids. I thought you know uh, our audience is uh, is aging like I am, but uh, now the young kids are now exposed to it and asking, come up, coming up to the table, asking me to say yes and excellent, and, and uh, the little kids. So it's and, you know, and of course, the more the more of these they make, the more toys. Um, that just keeps bringing people around. So here, you know, here I thought, well, you know, and the show's aging out and blah blah blah. Then it's like uh, now those younger kids more than ever are watching the show. So. And how how do you deal with that on a personal level? Like the amount of fame and love that you get from all the things you've done. Uh, is it intimidating or is it rewarding? Is it gratifying? Oh, it's uh, really rewarding. This uh, TFCon this time around was, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of an emotional one, actually, on, on different levels. Uh, you know, uh, people that come up um, all different ages uh, and um, and races and, 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 and different people, you know, uh, some people... Um, or you know, slightly autistic or autistic on the spectrum, but there's, there was all that going on. There was an amazing kid I met who was a, a special Olympian. I didn't know that he's a big kid. He was Jack, man. He was a you know, I could tell he worked out. And I said, God, oh, dude, you you know, you lift or what? He goes, uh, you know, he told me I was his hero and stuff. And his dad sitting there, you know, um, and he said he just won the Special Olympics for weightlifting. Oh my God, what do you listen to when you lift? You know, 
goes, oh, Metallica, you're, you're, Mr. you're my hero, Mr. K, you're my hero. And so, you know, things like that were happening. And I, and I met a young young boy who had uh, just recently uh, completed a trip with his parents. Uh, and he came to see two people, he came to see me and, and, and the guy that was with the uh, the Transformers Toys, the, the company, that's the, yeah, oh. I forgot their name right now. But they do all, they, they had all the toys in the glass cases. Uh, oh, uh, that's um, Chosen Prime or H3 and yeah. Up. Yes, chosen prime. Chosen. Okay, and so uh, and he met. He came to see um, uh, one of the guys there, and and me, and and his father showed me pictures of their trip to Universal Studios in Orlando. They went to see the Transformers, and he said, and his father said, you know, that was that was oh yeah, it was that was his Make a Wish uh, trip, and I go oh yeah, so oh thing, wow, thing yeah, like that. Um, and literally, you know, I, I, it was such a busy weekend. The lines and, the, and everybody, I. I you know, young kids who, who come up and they're 19, want some advice and, you know, and, and, and nobody's ever taken the time or given them uh, a moment to, to give them a little advice and a little, little direction or whatever. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and they start kind of tearing up and you think, well, you know, what, what's going on? Anyway, it was, it was a lot of that uh, this time around. And, and uh, it is very emotional. It, it hits it that because you start seeing yourself, through these kids eyes you, you start start seeing your your kids um through the eyes of these kids and yeah. you realize how grateful you know you are and how this this show we did you know venus and i were talking about how this it makes an impact and and you have no idea how it makes an impact and and deeply and and uh i had a chance to visit my folks in in peterborough because i was in in canada and i after the show was there for a week and you know, yeah, you tell the stories and in, 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 you, you kind of break down a little bit because you're like, you know, it's heavy, man. But at the end of the day, what it's all about is just bringing a little joy. There's so much, you know, shit in the world today. And uh, getting True. up every day sometimes for some people is just a battle. It's a battle. And, um, and, and so these conventions, you know, when you get a chance to see some old friends and friendships that I've made uh, with uh, – with um everyone knows goober you know uh, i see people like you know yeah goober, goober. i've it, it was uh, my second you know, convention and yeah. yeah yeah you guys and you just like it's we i've known them uh, people uh, these folks for colin and the folks who run it for years and you, uh, the, the biggest thing i take away is that you just bring a weekend where we can get away and uh, you know we can some you know buy some toys and it's it's a bit of bring a bit of joy you know where you don't have to think about what's going on outside you know um, so it was, yeah, this, T, this particular, this TFCon was one of those like moments you go, wow, wow, this is, you know, uh, it's all sort of fun, but it's, there's, you know, it hits us all on a deeper level sometimes. And, uh, for whatever reason it, 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 it hit me on, uh, you know, this one. So yeah, I think uh, grateful is the word I use that a lot, you know, just, uh, you know, giving life to a character that says yes once in a while <laughs> you, know, oh. you, know that, you know it's it's makes people smile and they go well, you know what that's fantastic that's uh now, how many times in uh, one week do you hear somebody say yes to you oh all the time yeah that's what <laughs> i mean i had at the boston this weekend and uh they'll all like hear more of that it's not a specific transform it's a, it's a fan expo so it'll be you know uh fans of different voice and on camera people of different shows, but there'll be a lot of people coming up and, you know, asking me to say, yes, I haven't done an East coast show, uh, Eastern U S a show for quite a while. So, okay. Uh, I'm well, I'm sure you'll have fun folks, uh, out there. And, uh, so what I do, yeah, but usually it's the other way around. Like I do an, a voice actor spotlight, then I send it to the actor in hopes that they reply to me. And then I do the interview. But I have to say, when I got to your website to do my research on you, to do my spotlight, I got absolutely intimidated with the sheer amount of work that you do. And I had not realized that I had been hearing you on Shea 106 in Ottawa for 10, 15 years now. Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah, I was on that station for uh, for quite a while. I hadn't, I hadn't been on there for, for a number of years, but I, yeah, I used to be on that. Uh... Schaefer for, for for quite a bit. I'm all over the East Coast now in Canada, all over the West Coast, and uh, yeah, you, it just middle. people don't yeah. know yeah. how many times they hear you in one week, but you yeah you, you're there. Um, so this rock Shea 106. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that's my local station, people. Uh, yeah. So I just want to, but when I do research, I try to dig a little bit 
into you know a people's past. So so I, that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, you mentioned Peter Obero. Are you from there? Yeah, I was born there. Okay, so and then how did you, you know, did you where did you uh, go to not high school but college? Um, what's your to, what was uh, your path? Well, I started when I was 17. I got a gig on the air on our local radio station because I really enjoyed radio. Um, and that's a story within itself. But I was, you know, I was on the air and didn't know what I was doing. And but somebody gave me a shot, and then I wanted to pursue that. So Bra said I, I took broadcasting communications at uh, Loyalist College uh, in Belleville, which that literally recently, as of uh, the announcement was made about a month ago or so, when I, we were visiting, uh, that uh, they're no longer doing the uh, the radio program is like gone. Ah, uh, okay. Which is, uh, which is, you know, sad. Um, but yeah, that's where uh, I didn't I didn't really finish it because um, I was on the air and and uh, but I did finish. I did get my certificate and uh, I finished it through correspondence. I don't even know how what I did and how I even did it, but I I got the piece of paper and I graduated. Okay, um, which, that was important. But yeah, uh, so that led to uh, I think it was in Brockville. Did some mornings near Brockville. Okay. Brock, Brock Vegas, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brock Vegas. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Um, what was that? London, London. It was London, Ontario. Did country radio in London. Um, and then uh, Vancouver was where things started to happen. Um, I moved out there in 89, uh, just in time for, uh, to, you know, to. to exposed to the animation uh, which i had no idea it even existed and it could could even be done um and they were doing it out there under the uh under deke animation dic yes um st standard done in canada i think uh but <laughs> but they uh that's yeah that's where i sort of you know from radio the morning show creating characters and um sort of acting so i do some on, on camera stuff and stage work and then uh But what really left a, a mark, I, I hated seeing myself on television to the point where I just cringe. Um, I, I think it, I, I'm older now, and, and now that I sort of, uh, um, you know, I, I would do it again in a heartbeat, I think, because, um, yeah, I, 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 I think we're doing for the wrong reasons uh, on camera. I don't, know what, I don't know what the reasons were, but what really resonated with me is was behind the mic and it came from radio okay. and it came the fact that i could do cartoons and create characters and i created this guy back in you know vancouver and uh gi joe and that whole thing um and and we're gonna you know, start doing anime and then this shomaru you know did, little did i know that this character uh is still uh, as popular today if not more so than it was <laughs> It's amazing so, the life that these yeah. these characters have after you're you're done recording, and then yeah. they, they come back in a sequel, they come back in, in a spinoff, or sounds wild, you know. And then it's it's uh, it's been a bunch of you know stuff over the uh, recent stuff for the last little while. It's been it's been a trip, man. Be able to do that, you know, working for the MCU and um, and do one of my favorite characters. I I didn't play him exactly, but He Man. I got a chance to work on a He Man series. It's uh, on Netflix still. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a good show, actually. Yeah. I preferred that iteration of Masters of the Universe compared to the full bait and switch reboot we had with uh, the Masterverse, you know, like uh, the I, Kevin I, Smith. I, yeah, I, I never watched too much of it. Um, yeah. And um, I didn't really know. And I don't like to really watch stuff that I'm in because I have other things I'd like to see. Uh, but I did watch. Um, Uh, I still have to finish it. The, the Masters of the Universe, the He-Man, uh, yeah. our, our, our version. And uh, so, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, it's a very good show. Yeah. No, congratulations. Yes. And how so, do you uh, how do you react when the MCU calls you and say, hey, we'd like to hire you? Is it a oh, my God moment or is it just another job? Um, it's my Well, my agent, my agent didn't even know. I wasn't even allowed to know what it was. I mean, when they send it to you, it comes direct from casting. Like, it's a real secret of, you know, you don't, you okay. know, you don't tell anybody, you know, nothing. Even the agent said, you know, we don't even know the script. So I was between me and casting. That was it. So my agent called and and, and I realized what it was and who it was for and who was directing. I, I was, what? And so I tend not to get too excited. Um, okay. I'm, I'm jaded. Uh, now, uh, now that in, in the business for for uh, you know, a lot of years, like I, mm -hmm. until my name is on the screen, until it's in the can, and until it's actually out there, I don't really believe it. <laughs> Which is understandable. I've learned, I've learned that. 
and we all know that everybody in this business knows what I'm talking about. But, you know, I thought, oh, well, you know, they're going to get me to, to do this and I'll scratch it and I'll, uh, you know, create the character and then they'll, you know, I'll go to the movies and it'll be like, it'll be uh, Michael Fassbender or something. It'll be somebody else. They've, uh, you know, I think okay. it's a, a star. Uh, so I fully expect it to be, to re be replaced. Um, I thought that was, you know, it was just an opportunity to work with, uh, with Chloe Zhao and, and, and the Marvel thing is pretty cool. And I thought, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice, you know, if this, and I still it literally, um, uh, up until the you know the, the week it actually came out and when it actually there was an article uh that was done and they had mentioned uh that i was involved in oh maybe they kept it and then and then then we went to see it and i heard my and i go oh shit they kept it wow you know i was really i was quite surprised uh, well i'm not because it's always casting the right voice for the right character that to me that's a Something that should always be done. And you're touching on my favorite question, which I know I already asked you at TFCon, but uh, for and all of the people in the chat know that that's my favorite question. There's celebrity voice actor, and then there's working voice actor. And that's you guys, right? The, the guys that build the business, build the animation industry, made it the, the strength it is today. Uh, you know, you worked after... Uh, you know, the, on the stepping stone that Mel Blanc and Frank Welker did, too, because to me, you're the third generation Mel Blanc, you know, that this is yeah. where I classify you. And yeah. how do you feel about being replaced by Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Kevin Hart or anybody other, you know, like that it's just a an actor that's going to use his own voice? Sometimes they do change it, but, you know, like Chris Pratt in the Mario movie didn't really change much of his voice. It still mm -hmm. felt like Chris Pratt. So what's your point of view on this? To me, it's a, a point of contempt, but what is it to yeah. you? You know, it, that just, that's the way in the business. I mean, they don't forget, you know, these these folks have, um, have started with nothing. You know, they, they some of them have come from less than nothing and built their careers and... Uh, and on who they are. And if you're going to sell a movie, you know, um, these days, it's very, the fact that a movie gets done is beyond me. I mean, it's, it, it should, it's, it's, everything is against you. Um, and uh, the fact that these things get done. So, you know, you need to sell, you need to sell some, uh, put some, some uh, butts in seats and, and, um, you know, Dave K is not going to do that, but Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know, might. Um, it depends who you ask. There is a, there is, you know, look, this is, this is what we do. We, um, we, we, you know, create characters in our voices. And, and, uh, and I got to say, I was watching some clips this morning. Um, where was it for? It was a reference to something. And I was watching uh, a scene from um, um, Shrek. Uh, right. And uh, the guy who played Rumpelstiltskin. And um, there's a few people... Uh, in there and the voices are good it's very i mean the act you know the acting is very good it's really really good now it is you know if you if you're an on-camera if you're trained at say the royal academy or you're you know you're you're trained uh in this business your theater uh, you can absolutely bring some incredible in the and in, in performances behind the mic because you're you're this is what you do you're a Patrick Stewart. You're a oh, yeah. actor. Um, it, it's uh, it's it, you know. I guess it's just a, it's a tough thing to answer. I know that people want to hear. You know, they ask me if I'm disappointed about the. You know, if you're not in this and not, and I goes, well, look, I had a chance to inhabit the character for a minute and create something, and that that that's awesome. I I always strive to be as real as possible behind the mic, and if 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 Dwayne the Rock Johnson is the right, you know, if his his acting is great and, 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 you know, they make the, they make the show and it sounds great. You know, uh, you know, there you go. I mean, we don't make uh, Dwayne the rock Johnson money. Um, but that's just, that's the nature of the beast. You can't, it can't be, we sure you can be bitter about it, but what's the point of that? Why, why would you be bitter? Um, the, the other performers and actors like we are, um, it's, it's a difficult answer because I know this people are getting sort of disappointed and the, the celebrities, but they, you know, they put their, they put their dues in, they put their time in, um, and, and, um, they've come at it from a different point. You know, when you're mm -hmm. a voice actor, you, you rely on your voice and the theater of the mind. If you're, 
you're familiar being on camera, you know, um, you have to, you have to be good at what you do, no matter what. Uh, my job is to, you know, is to be as best as I can be, is to be as real, is to, you know, continue to learn and develop characters and, you know, stuff I did when I was younger, just, I listen to, and I, again, at the crew word cringe comes to mind. And, and I, my job now is to try and make it as, as seamless and real as possible. And sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, uh, people who are on camera, they're, they are who they are. And my best advice to anyone getting into it is you better figure out who you are first because yeah, but it can do like a weird, you know, funny voice or whatever, but it has to be, you have to be good at what you do first at being you. And then you can, you know, uh, give life to a character that uh, uh, create, create like a troll, you know, if he's under the bridge, you know, he's a real person, he breathes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you have to create something real uh, and, and, and you have to be very comfortable with who you are <laughs> before you start doing that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hide behind a character. You want to bring yourself oh, forward. You, you, you're, you, are the, you are the character. So uh, I, this is a very long-winded uh, on and on. That's what I like. That. But I get it. But the same token, you know, uh, it's the entertainment industry. And all I can do, and people in my, on my side of the microphone, is to be as good as we could possibly be so they have to take a look they may not hire us you know and they may like you know well you know uh who's gonna you know sell tickets uh then they may hire you for something else and bring you in for for a different thing so you have to be as good as you can uh, uh, uh if you're competing with celebrities you just have to make them think maybe or question their decision. <laughs> yeah, but I mean I I read on your website you once build a day at 28 hours. So people do want you if you're able to build that much in one day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean maybe that that, that was maybe an older quote from a maybe a decade or so. Uh now it's I I just want to do uh uh less for more. <laughs> so well, less more for more is a very efficient <laughs> way to go. And how like did you do like I don't know, when you were younger, uh, you know, primary or secondary school, high school, were you in theater plays? Were you active? No, I, in, was, no. Be. I was in sports. I, I, I can tell. Sport, but I also, I also hung out with uh, with uh, drama because I thought they – So I, I realized early on, even as even in uh, in eighth grade, we did a play and I had the, I had the stupid little part that didn't say anything. And I go, God, I just want to say something. Mm -hmm. Why can't I – you know, and I just – didn't have the looks and didn't have this whatever it was i was never the popular kid and never really got you know i got you know you, you get looked over and and um and i always just wanted to be as much as i'm a private person and i like my privacy and i like to be quiet i i, I do and you know i wanted to be the center of attention for some unknown forsaken reason <laughs> okay <laughs> i really i really don't uh but but um but yeah i i, I thought they were th because it was it, to me like theater folks in in in, in, in drama uh they were the folks i would identify with more uh than than any other uh group um because they were who they were and they were they, they were you know proud of who they were um and uh, they weren't afraid to show it and they it takes a lot of guts to go on stage in front of your classmates in high school and you know perform a show you know, and a couple of these kids were gay at the time, you know, and when we first found it, you know, I, I, I just, I thought it was so brave of all these, and I thought, yeah. these, these are people I want to hang out with because they don't care. And how brave is that? You know, especially your, you know, high school, you're, 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 you're 16 impressionable trying to make a, you know, a, um, make yourself known and, and, uh, to hide behind something and you're not afraid, you know, that's why I, I grabbed you were the drama folks because they were like, I, I thought they were the bravest kids and, and they were talented and i was just i want to be part of that i want to be part of that creating something and performing and, and uh and so i gravitated toward that side okay um, i just really liked their company because they were quirky they were fun interesting and uh i just i found that much more interesting than you know um jocks and in parts of the, yeah it was like you know i, I love sports and i like that but i just kind of one or two dimensional, but uh, I always said drama kids, you know, and that's what had much more going on and much more 
a lot more fun and they were having way more fun than everybody else. <laughs> well, that's that that is true. And but I'm surprised that you were not a you know, you said you're you weren't a popular kid, but I've met you once. You do have a presence and a charisma. You make people at ease very easily. Although, yes, there are people that are there to see you, so you already have that, you know, foot in the door. But um, it's uh, I, I don't know. I was assuming that you would have been, you know, top of the food chain. And yeah, I just, you know, it's weird because I had some kid come all the way. Uh, Mr. K, it's so good to see you. Uh, and I'm he's all excited. I go, oh, what's the accent? He said, I flew f- f- all the way from Hungary to, to here to see you. And I go, what? Because yes, I, I saved my money. He saved his money. He spent all his money. And he came to see me. And I was wow. like, are you kidding me? You okay. know, he, to me, I'm like, I'm just Dave from, you know, from Peterborough. Like I'm still, I'm still like, you know, um, um, down to earth. Like I said, wow. Uh, <laughs> I wow. Really know what to say. I thought you I know, was, I, cause I drove, I wasn't supposed to go to TFCon this year because, but I interviewed Paul Eiding about a month ago and, uh, he said he was going to be there. And, uh, so I said, oh, well I'll, I'll go. So I drove five hours to meet him and then. At the same time as I'm going to ask Venus and David if they want to do the interview, and then I drove back on the same day. But this kid from Hungary, wow, it he got me yeah, beaten he's all the way from Hungary. You know, there was a, and there was a, look, there was a young couple that uh, from Russia, you know, and and the, and they were sweet kids, and they they of course have uh, you know left a while ago uh, when the leaving was good, and then mm-hmm. a girl from Ukraine and her boy, she brought me a bottle of uh, of. Uh, pretty good uh, Chardonnay from Chablis in France. And I went, why don't you? Because, oh, I follow you on the wine because I'm a wine nerd. And so I have this little wine thing on, <laughs> on okay. Instagram. And she, and she gave me a gift. I said, well, well, let me give you a gift. You know, I, I mean, it's just amazing because it's just, it's it's mind-blowing, really. Um, because all I really wanted to do when I was a kid was just have some fun. I wanted to, how do I, how do I, you know, I don't even, I didn't even think about the money, really. I, I just sort of thought about, well, how do I, I just want to get up and have fun. Everybody. How do, what, what's, what's the best, you know, uh, and, and uh, yeah, when you get that first cartoon, you think, Oh, this is what I want to do every day. And well, so, uh, well, it does seem that sort of humbling, really humbling. Yeah. It does seem that voice actors seem to be much more happy people than what you hear from on tabloids from actors who are super popular. They have everything I mean, in the world. They are, you know, they, I mean, you, you know, you said the word tabloid. I mean, we all have, we all have stuff, man. All of us have stuff, um, and it's you know, how we deal with it. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'm not so good at it. And, and um, but I'll tell you one thing: it's that everybody's got stuff going on. Everybody's exactly, you never know. With and uh, our job is just to sort of bring joy uh, to uh, to folks who come in, um, you know, and, and see us. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool, really. Uh, yeah, it's a great business. And when you were growing up. Who were the people that made you happy? Who were your inspirations, uh, voice or otherwise, or people that really said, you know what, you should go for this? Yeah, nobody really. I mean, I I, I was uh, I had radio heroes. I used to listen to you know Rick Dees. I used to listen to radio stations uh, across the border when I was like in Canada. Uh, you know, um, and uh, I wanted to be part of that and. Uh, You know, John Major was a person in Toronto that actually wrote me a letter back. I was 18, wrote him a letter and wanted to be in. I thought it might it might have a one time wanted to live in Toronto, but I, um, you know, be part of the much music sort of thing. But, right. Uh, okay. I there, I used to yeah I still I used to have uh, but the, my biggest uh, uh, one of my biggest heroes is Don LaFontaine, um, and uh, he's the one who told me you should be doing trailers. You know, you'd be doing. Him and I became uh, friends, and, and we didn't know each other long. And, and uh, bastard passed away on us, and I was, you mm. know, was uh, it's you know when someone you, you, leaves the earth too soon, you get yes. kind of mad. You go, well, wait a minute, whoa, 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 wait. It was uh, sad and, and, and angry because he's the one who said you got to be down here. And then Tara Strong is the one who, uh, in animation, I was back and forth, and, and Tara said to me in, in Transformers animated, and she said, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" What, why are you not here? Why? What, what are you doing? Let me, let me, let me take you in. Let me take you. I want to introduce you to my, you know. And she was a, a sweetheart and introduced me around. And, and and I had my agents for life, you know, DPN. And uh, and so, the, the, 
it really, you know, I have lots of heroes, uh, you know, growing up, um, uh, you know, uh, but I just, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to be my, figure out who I was. And it, it, even, it, even, you know, my, my, my fifties now, I'm still figuring out who I am, which is, which is fantastic. You know, I never really want to figure that out. <laughs> you want to keep searching and, you know, questioning yourself and that's no, cool. It's just a journey, man. It's all a journey. But yes. A lot of people instrumental and, in, in, you know, radio people, uh, animation people, um, um, uh, Rob Paulson, who never returns my texts. I, I love Rob <laughs> dearly. <laughs> and okay. Paul Heide. Paul's one of the nicest human beings on the planet. Oh, he's my uh, my best and, friend uh, right now. I love Paul Heide. Yeah, I'm... Paul has like little nuggets. He'll say something. He'll, he'll oh. like, hmm, you know, uh, yeah, people like that uh, can say, uh, I call them smart ass Buddhas. They're not people in power. They're not people in, uh, you know, they're not uh, uh, priests or policemen or parents. Or whatever. They're people you meet uh, on a daily basis for once in a while, or maybe even once that say something to you and you, re it, it, and it kind of changes your whole trajectory of your life. Um, those are those little signposts the universe sends you. And uh, I call it like smart ass Buddhas, man. Yeah. They're they, in the, in it, it changes you. So yeah, always be aware of that. And uh, sometimes voices come from that, you know, sometimes uh, characters come from that <laughs> oh yeah have you ever done that talking. base a, a character let's say on gary chalk of or of course I, i i base characters on people i hear all the time you know my sorry shock squatch is my uncle terry there eh? you know uh, that's right <laughs> okay. eh? you know um and, and clank is you know a person uh, he's he's a robot but uh it's based on sort of things you hear i mean if you go go to uh, I'm not a Vegas guy, but I, if I go somewhere and sit and have a drink and listen to people walking by, you get all kinds of voices like this here. You know, you get a guy talking like this and, and somebody's talking like that. You know, it's just all these people you meet to, to pay attention to. And that's where all these voices come from because they're real people. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the things that I found while doing a lot of research on uh, the G1 voice actors, uh, that most of the voice were imp impression of other people. You know, oh, try to do it like this uh, comedian. Try to do it like that actor, and oh, yeah, that sure, they yeah. they build up yeah, like yeah. that. So everybody steals everything. <laughs> exactly. So and yeah. uh, how did your family like? Was there a moment where you sat down with your parents and said, "Okay, I'm going to be uh, a voice actor. This is what I'm going to do." You know, did you have to leave the family business behind, or what kind of situation? No, there's no, there no family business. No. Okay. Um, I I I couldn't wait to get out. I mean, I, I couldn't wait to go and travel because being in radio, you know, meant you had to travel around. If you're going to, to uh, progress and, and, uh, and make more money and, and uh, work in a larger market, you had to go. And so, uh, you know, I was out the, out the house, went to college, and I was young, you know, young. And as soon as I had an opportunity, I was, I was gone. Um, and uh, there's some lonely times. <laughs> there some lonely. Probably, yes. Time because, uh, You know, I like to be by myself, but I also like to have some friends. There are times where, like, there's this, you know, you're away from your girlfriend and became my wife. And, uh, you, you know, in cold, cold Brock Vegas, Brockville, Ontario. And you're, like, in this little one-bedroom shack of an apartment. You're, like, what am I doing? What this? What am I doing? <laughs> this is horrible. But it's all part of it. Um, all right. I am so sorry. We are actually going to have to wrap up now. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. You have it. Uh, okay. Well, no problem. Well, thank you so much. I know it, it. You know, we had technical difficulties, and for Anthony in the chat, who asking why we asked to use Zoom. Uh, well, we've had a lot of diff technical difficulties today, but I'm really grateful that you uh, took time, uh, Samantha. Thank you for coordinating all of this. It's been a delight working with you, David. Thanks, thank man. you so much for coming on the uh, the channel. Um, anything yeah, you want to so plug? All the uh, stuff. Too bad, man. You know, it's, too, it's a shame. Uh, and anybody asking any questions uh, quickly? That uh, anybody have any questions quickly? Uh, do something real quick, quick, quick. Uh, well, the usual. Um, you know, who's your favorite character? Uh, stuff like that. Um, well, it has to be him, really. I mean, I love them all, but really, he's the one you're most recognized. Like in the streets, you're I'm walking down the aisle. You're walking down a a boulevard and somebody says hey i heard that voice in, in you know before yeah no one ever does that by the way no one ever you know <laughs> but, okay but it's, if you ever mention to people that oh yeah i'm part of the transformers look transformers well what i said well i was megatron megatron i was Opti optimus yeah, and now all of a sudden they put two and two together and it's like mind-blowing you know you're clank 
I didn't know you were a Clank. Oh, that's right. Clank. Clank. No. And you're the only actor who ever voiced Optimus and Omegatron. So, yeah, that's a world record right there. Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's good. Cool. All right. Record. Well, thank yeah, you very yeah. much, everyone, for uh, being in the chat. Thank you, David, Samantha, again, uh, for uh, participating in this. It's a It's been an honor. Uh, so I just want to do my quick outro. Uh, so uh, anyone, if you like this video, this interview, uh, you know, check out the David the, the K dot com. There's tons of info on what he does, and if you want to hire him, you can actually uh, do that through that. Yeah, you can too. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. And if you're in the Boston area, um, I'm in Boston this weekend at uh, Fan Expo. Oh well, there you go. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this uh, interview. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Also, leave a comment. Love reading those. Keep coming back. I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you a right to be an asshole. Take care. <laughs>